Cornette, and I am a 17-year veteran teacher. This is actually my first year in K-4. I was just sharing with Ms. Allen that I've taught 16 years at the high school level in biology and librarian and that type of thing, and I moved down to be a K-4 computer lab teacher and technology resource teacher, and I am absolutely loving the little ones. Never in my life have I had so many hugs, <laughs> <laughs> and I always feel proud, I guess, even though you shouldn't necessarily say that probably that way, but whenever I'm walking with two or three teachers in the hallway and a class walks by me and they all are like, hi, Miss Cornett, we love you, Miss Cornett, and they're not saying anything to the other teachers, I'm like, okay, maybe I've really found <laughs> what I've been looking for. Um, but the students have really challenged me to have to think in a different format. You know, my high school students come in, they already have basic knowledge of a lot of things, and then I move into this new technology position and I'm going, okay, what can I actually get kindergarten through fourth graders to do? You know, I'm used to high school students and you know what do you know they can't even type in word what do I expect to get out of K4 and so I decided to take a different approach whenever I started looking for strategies and techniques I couldn't find a lot of keyboarding things other than little cutesy games but they didn't teach them true keyboarding like I wanted my third and fourth grade students to be able to keyboard you know I want them to use proper procedure to be able to sit proper hand placement you know I didn't want them to be able to pop a balloon that just had a letter T and they could take one finger and do it so I started thinking how can I get my students to learn keyboarding but do it in a way that was going to actually mean something to them so that they would really grasp on and hold those skills and then I started thinking okay well let's look at these academic expectations and these um, ISTE um, technology standards and those types of things, what else is a K-4 student supposed to be able to do? Well, they are supposed to be able to know proper use and care for, for technology. They are supposed to be able to um, manipulate images. They are supposed to be able to um, choose sources and evaluate websites and um, complete finished products using multimedia um, sources. So I thought, okay, what if I ask my third and fourth grade students when we first started school, what are you all interested in? What does our school need videos on or some type of interactive um, device for that you need as a, if you were to walk in this school day one, what would you like to know about our school? So they actually came up with what the six um, video productions that my class is going to do. We're going to do a series of three minute, more or less PSA type videos. Um, one third grade class chose that they want to introduce our kindergarten students to school procedures. So they divided themselves up. There's 26 students in the class. They divided themselves up into groups of three and four. They are doing everything from how to line up for bus, to get on the school bus. You know, what are bus, the bus rules, that type of thing. To what do we do when we go line up in the, for lunch in the, in the cafeteria? You know, what all do you need to know? about your lunch number and you know where to sit and how to take your tray up and throw it in the trash all those little procedures the teachers wanted the students to do a video on stations because kindergarten students don't understand the concept of stations and they say they spend um, several days if not weeks teaching students how to utilize stations in the classroom um, another group of students is going to do the procedure for going to the library what are the library rules you know how do you check out a book how do you return a book um, then the final group in the kindergarten class is actually, or with the kindergarten strategies, is going to do the computer lab rules. They're going to make a video of how to properly come in and sit down in the computer lab and what are the expectations for lining up and walking in the hallways between se um, special classes. A second group of third grade has decided they wanted to do the history of Hazard because they didn't realize that we've actually had an NBA player from Hazard. You know, and they wanted to start looking at the city of Hazard, and we started talking about the great flood that had occurred and flooded down Main Street. This year we had a major fire earlier in the fall that actually burned down um, some of our students' houses and the big Peking Chinese restaurant, and several businesses were involved in that. And, you know, they wanted to know what other events had happened, so they started developing a history of Hazard. The final third grade class is doing a history of Hazard Independent Schools. Two or three years ago, the school district celebrated its 100th birthday. And they did a pictorial history, but there was not a history of like, you know, how the school actually began with voiceover and talking about it beginning as Hazard Baptist Institute and, you know, the fact that they actually had these teams and we had the old trophies from way back in the 30s whenever they, you know, started and um, the kids were amazed that all these things actually still existed and we still had all these pictures and that type of thing. So they want to do a history of the school system and then they actually want to go present at the the board meeting. We've already set that up for the spring that they'll go present at the board meeting and show the history of the school district and they're going to do a second video that's going to show what they expect the future of 
the school district to be. And then my fourth grade classes, one fourth grade class is doing community service activities that our K-4 students can actually be involved in. Um, we have a community problem solving project as well that you heard about earlier as far as the process, but we are redoing a playground in our city. And the kids went down, it's a playground that a lot of people use, but it's kind of neglected in that they keep the grass cut, but the equipment has been there 30, 40 years and you know it's starting to get run down. So they are creatively coming up with, they're gonna, we've already got it contracted to build a giant, um, basically like a tree house, but it's only like three feet off the ground so they don't get hurt. Um, <laughs> and they're um, painting hopscotch blocks and putting the numbers on them themselves. And they gotta go in and actually take measurements and design and figure out how much space they have. And then a second fourth grade group is working on a project where they will um, do digital storytelling. So they're gonna take some of their favorite books and then some books that they've actually written in their English classes by that point in time and create the entire illustrations for them and then they'll do a digital storytelling where the words will light up as they say them across the screen for the younger grades to be able to comprehend. And then the last fourth grade class is doing, bless their little hearts, they're doing keyboarding. They're gonna try do a series of videos to teach the second graders how to keyboard and what the proper procedure are. Because right now, as far as keyboarding strategies, I'm only doing the third and fourth grade. And when I showed them the very first keyboarding video, the only one that I could find that seemed to be geared at all toward third and fourth, they're like, this is horrible. <laughs> and they're like, can't you find anything better? And they actually have asked me not to show any more videos right now. I do it all with me teaching them because they say I'm more exciting than the little cartoon videos that are on there. <laughs> so they're gonna come up with their own videos to be able to train. And this is something that we hope to be able to move forward with in that, you know, the videos that the students see next year will have the previous grade, so then next year's students can come up with another set of videos that they can do, and so we can actually have maybe a four-year cycle of redoing those same videos so they don't become outdated with students that they don't know. With the grant money, I actually have purchased two HP Stream laptops. Um, if you don't know about the HP Stream laptops, they're right around $200 and they're 13 inch laptops and that way our students, all of the computers that we have in our school, we have some iPads, but everything else is like Macs or desktops. There's nothing that's portable for the students to actually take out and record interviews and that type of thing on and be able to really work with sitting in the floor or being able to do that anytime, anywhere learning. So we went with two laptops, we did two digital camcorders and then a digital camera just for still photos if we can't find them. We do have a couple of local um, photographers who have collected those history videos and they're willing to share all of their videos as long as we give credit in the credits at the end of the video. So that is basically where I'm going with this. If you all have any questions or any suggestions, How yes ma'am. I have them once a week. Once a week. I get them once a week for 45 minute period. Um, I do have some students on Friday afternoons, they have like Friday fun time if they didn't get in trouble all week, I guess is what it's called, it's like the last 45 minutes of the day. And they actually have a snack and usually get to watch a movie or something like that. I have students who are volunteering to forego their snack and their movie because they want to come to computer lab and work on their projects. So to me that was a, a big win to say, you know, because no, they know they're not even allowed to have water in the computer lab and to say you have to leave everything there and choose to come work. They're loving it. And how long do you think um, right now they're in the planning stages of um, figuring out what they want to actually include, um, interviewing people to be able to get what their um, like pictures and they're having to sit, we've had to do email and they've had to learn how to type an email and actually send an email out and how to reply to one and those types of strategies. So the actual film editing process is going to be from January until around the 1st of March and then we're hoping by the middle of end of March to actually be able to have them finalized and uploaded to the hauler and that type of thing and presented to the board. We're having a parents night thing so that they'll actually, we're going to do like a whole red carpet type thing and let them come in and show their video and have popcorn and the whole deal. So yeah, we're hoping that video, uh, that everything will be filmed prior to Christmas break and then to have a three month time slot so that we give them six to seven weeks for actual editing and finalizing. I'm just using basic Microsoft Movie Maker because it's free, it's easy, and then my older brother actually works for Microsoft. <laughs> and, and so, um, yeah, so he uh, has volunteered his services because 
Um, Microsoft has a matching program that if he donates time or funds, and this is true for any Microsoft employee, so if you all know some or want to get in co contact with some, let me know. Um, they have a matching service program. So if they come in and donate $500 worth of time, then Microsoft will match with $500. And so that's why, how I'm hoping to make the grant it, you know, extend and become self-serving. If he comes in and donates a couple of days a year to help my students with this process, then it'll be able to fund the next year. So I won't have to write the same type of grant again and again to get additional supplies. It'll just keep cycling itself. So any other questions or suggestions? Well, I look forward to hearing the rest of your old grants. Thank you. <laughs>